Hello everyone, it's Elizabeth here bringing the Looking at Population Dynamics through AQA, A-Level and Environmental Science. To go along with this, to help you remember everything, we produced a set of flashcards for you. So you can get these over on Quizlet or they're also available as part of the course for free over on my website. A-Level Environmental Science. Topic 1. The Living Environment. Lesson 14. Population Dynamics Population dynamics can be defined as the study of the size of a population and how it changes over time. It is also concerned with looking at why a population may increase or decrease in relation to other organisms. The first thing we're going to look at is a graph for carrying capacity. The carrying capacity of an area can be defined as the maximum number of individuals an area can sustain without depleting resources. These resources could be food or water availability. This graph shows how a population, the number of individuals of a single species in an area, will respond after first colonising a new area and how the carrying capacity affects the population size. If we look at the beginning of the graph, the population starts to increase as soon as it has been introduced to the area. We can describe this increase as exponential as there are lots of available resources and therefore low intraspecific competition between members of the same species. So lots of breeding can occur. This continues until the carrying capacity is reached. Once the population reaches the carrying capacity, then there will be more intraspecific competition as resources are limited, so only the strongest will survive, which may lead to a decrease in population below the carrying capacity. This decrease will mean there are some extra resources available, so the population increases again. This cycle repeats itself as the population size fluctuates above and below the carrying capacity. We can describe the population as dynamic, e.g. changing. The carrying capacity is limiting the size of the population. Other factors that you need to be aware of when looking at population growth curves like this one are density dependent and density independent factors. Density dependence describes selection pressures that are going to have a heightened effect as the population increases and lesser effect when it decreases again. They are dependent on the population density. On the other hand, density independent factors do not worsen or lessen in impact with the size of the population. Some examples of density dependent factors include the spread of disease and food availability, as the more individuals there are, the more of an issue each would become. An example of a density independent factor would be any kind of natural disaster such as an earthquake, a fire for example, as no matter how big the population, they are going to cause damage. If we go back to our graph, then the points at which the population is highest will be where the density dependent factors will be having a large impact on the size of the population. We are going to dig a bit deeper into population dynamics by looking at the processes that alter the size of a population. There are four in total, birth rate, death rate, immigration, movement into a population, and emigration, movement out of a population. These processes vary hugely between different species. Some species have extremely high birth rates, reach sexual maturity early on in their lifetime, and very low parental care. These are known as R strategists. For revision purposes only, pretend the R stands for rapid, to help you remember which is which. An example of an R strategist would be a sea urchin. These species tend to experience quite high offspring mortality, so have lots of offspring, to increase the probability of at least one surviving. Opposite to R strategists are K strategists, such as blue whales. They have one or two offspring, don't reach sexual maturity until later in their life, and use high parental care to ensure high offspring survival. Case strategists like blue whales are extremely vulnerable to overexploitation, as their breeding strategy does not increase the population size very quickly. When whaling was legal, lots of whale populations were fished to almost zero, and the populations have still not recovered fully since the ban, as most will only have one offspring per breeding cycle, which could be every 10 years for example. Predation is a selection pressure that affects the number of deaths a population experiences. In your exam, you need to be able to describe and explain how predator-prey population dynamics work 
and they may present them to you on a graph to interpret. There are a couple of key patterns to remember. Firstly, predator population size should always remain lower than prey population size, or else there would be a shortage of food and intraspecific competition would kill the weakest predators. As well as this, predator population size will always peak and trough after a prey population. For example, if a number of prey organisms increases, then there is more food available for predators, so their population size will increase shortly after. This increases the predation of prey species, so their population will decrease, meaning less food for predators and more intraspecific competition, so predator population will decrease shortly after. Scientists can use all of this information to calculate the maximum sustainable yield of a population. This can be defined as the maximum number of individuals that can be harvested that won't deplete the population size over time. They will use data on birth and death rates, selection pressures like predator numbers, as well as whether they are R or K strategists to work out how many can be sustainably harvested. If harvesting is kept below MSY, then the population should not decline. With industries such as fishing, we are unfortunately harvesting individuals at a rate much higher than the MSY, and as a result, we are seeing huge declines in fish populations. To try and combat this, there are laws and regulations put in place, which set quotas for individual fishing boats or fishing companies to try and ensure we can allow the fish populations to recover and remain viable for future generations to fish from as well. Ouch! This is why in some videos I write explain scratches. <laughs>